This week, our full-time series rolls on as we tackle the number one most asked question ever, how do you get internet on the road? This is RV Miles. RV Miles is supported by L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean believes the more time you spend outside together, the better. That's why they've partnered with the National Park Foundation to help you find your park and get there with family and friends. With more than 400 national park sites in the U.S., there are beautiful surprises to be found in every corner of the country. And there's probably one closer than you think. Be an outsider with L.L. Bean. Welcome to episode 150 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, crisscross North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things outdoors, from RVs to travel destinations, gear, our national parks, and a whole lot more. 150 episodes. We're going to have a few milestones here coming up. There's one, 150. That's a good round number. And we've got our three-year anniversary coming up as well in just a few episodes. I'm very excited about that. Six episodes, I do believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Well, we did take one week break, so I guess you can go back one week. Maybe. I mean, I guess we could <laughs> count that. But we actually still did record something. We recorded something that said... Yeah. We're not recording anything right. this week. But it didn't have an episode number is what <laughs> I'm saying. True. So actually, 155 this is, is our third year anniversary. Yes. Believe it or not, we have <laughs> somehow been able to sustain this crazy, wacky idea of yours for almost three years. Hey, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys, the listeners. So thank you so much for being with us every single week. And thank you to all the new people that are here. RVing is uh, is it's really, alive and well. <laughs> it's alive and well right now. <laughs> RV sales are through the roof. I was just reading something about um, rentals of RVs, and rental RVs have been through the through the roof lately as well as people don't want to get on airplanes and they don't want to go to hotels. But what is really big right now is rentals of really, really, really expensive RVs. Ooh. I'm talking like $10,000 a week or more to rent these things. If anyone needs <laughs> us to test these out, please feel yeah. free to just slide right into our DMs. We would be happy to test out a $10,000 a week RV for you. <laughs> we are still having a wonderful time here in the San Juan National Forest area near Durango, Colorado. We're here for about two more weeks before we move on eastward through the state. And uh, we spent some more time at Mesa Verde National Park, which is quickly becoming one of our favorite national parks that we've been to. Happy to report that there is no longer a fire threatening yes. to cut our trip a little bit early. That seems to have been contained now, and it kept pushing further and further away from us as the week went by. But there were a couple days where we thought... Well, the that, campground was like smoked out with fire. It was. <laughs> uh, we were waking up to the smell of smoke, and then we were just hoping that the wind would come in and whoosh it away, and thankfully it did. But there were just, in my mind, constantly... How quickly can I get us out of here? What things need to be packed up? What do I care doesn't fall and get knocked around? Like, how do we get out of here as fast as possible? And, you know, thankfully, I never had to put that into action. And we got to watch a cool bit of firefighter activity with lots we of did. helicopters and, and planes. So you have this jet airliner now that drops fire retardant on fires. It's huge. It looked like it was a, a commercial airliner making an emergency landing in the canyon here. I kept saying I felt like we were back in Chicago because it was just constant all day yeah. long, the sound of planes like, coming right overhead. It was like overhead. you're sitting under O'Hare Airport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not we, the best sound. <laughs> we did have a little medical incident this week. We were hoping to do some more trails this uh, week. Yeah. But our, our son, our oldest, Jack, who is about to thir turn uh, 13. Ooh. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that right now. He, yeah. he hurt his ankle and we thought it might be fractured, but... For the third time in, in Jack's life, emergency visits have turned out to be absolutely nothing, and he just had a mild sprain. Yeah, we... Uh, but we're happy about that. That's good. Uh, yeah, let's... <laughs> positives. So happy he's okay. 
we have yet to figure out Jack's pain threshold. So to us, the behavior was, oh, this might, you know, be something pretty serious. I mean, like screaming, like at the top of his lungs when he touched his foot to the ground. (laughs) Nobody was awake when the injury Ugh. occurred either. Nobody so we knows what happened. Couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't really assess it. He was trying to sneak out really early in the morning and start the internet back up so that he could get on his iPad without anybody knowing that he was awake and doing this. So his story is is that he was trying to run out of the living room area. Like he was trying to hook it up right here behind us and run back into his room without me knowing because our bedroom is right behind this TV. And so he runs off and somehow manages to hurt his foot. But then, you know, we're like prepping to, that was going to be an adventure day. So there was the second time that week that we'd had an adventure day just completely fall apart because we were going to go to Mesa Verde that day. And we were going to do a hike that had been recommended to us by someone in the RV Miles Facebook group. We were going to hike from the campground. And he is just, I mean, our kids don't like to hike. So part of me was like, how much of this is like legit? Because they are not hikers until like 20 minutes into the hike. And then we start hearing things like, this is the most beautiful hike I've ever been on. This is amazing. This is so cool. But everything leading up to the hike and about 20 minutes into the hike is just pure H-E double hockey sticks. (laughs) My favorite part of the story, though, is that he thought running uh, back to his bed would be the quietest option. Our children are very, very petite individuals so it's like he's just he's just scurrying i don't know why we aren't we can't scurry like our children we're not as petite as they are but they just scurry from one place to another and that's what he was trying to do and somehow he injured himself and so you know thankfully we took a little trip into town and everything was great we had once again fantastic healthcare providers who cared for our family got us in and out and they were so safe temperature checks before we went in completely uh pandemic aware and Jason took him. I, I did not go, but you came back and you were, you know, you really mm-hmm. had some good things to say about this smaller yeah, hospital and, community. And, and thankfully the hospital was super quiet. I mean, we didn't Nobody see, wants to go. We didn't see another patient in the time we were there. Really? So, no. Well, you, and you guys were only gone about two hours yeah. too, which was quite yeah. impressive. So uh, a lot of uh, really busy since the last time we talked to all of you. Mm-hmm. Very, very busy around here. Fires, <laughs> stomach bugs, and sprained ankles. So that's been our week, but we've got a big show to talk about other things this week. We're going to come back in a moment with our answer to last week's brain teaser, and then we've got a whole lot to talk about when it comes to RV mobile internet. Be right back. The RV Miles podcast is supported by Harvest Hosts. Get back on the road again safely with a Harvest Hosts membership. Enjoy wide open RV camping on over a thousand wineries, farms, breweries, museums, and other unique attractions that invite RVers to visit and stay overnight for free. Plus, you're supporting local businesses who need help right now. RV Miles listeners can save 15% off a Harvest Hosts membership with code MILES. That's MILES for 15% off your Harvest Hosts membership. And by Amazon Camper Force. Get on the road with Amazon Camper Force. Amazon has work camper jobs that offer competitive wages and paid campground fees up to $550 per month. Earn completion bonuses and be a part of a community that will keep you coming back year after year. Go to amazon.com slash camperforce miles to learn more and choose your site today. That's amazon.com slash camperforce miles. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. We'll link to the website of both Harvest Hosts and Amazon Camperforce in the show notes at rvmiles.com slash 150. It's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. Why does a cat, upon entering a room, first watch one side, then watch the opposite side? I got nothing. Because it can't watch both sides at the same time. 
he will be here until we stop doing this podcast. I made fun of your terrible brain teaser the last that I don't was know if it was awful. last week or the week before. This one was pretty bad. This one was pretty <laughs> bad. It was so bad that barely anyone wanted to answer this one. Okay. That was pretty bad. I've got a much better brain teaser <laughs> later on in the show. But hey, today we're going to talk about RV mobile internet, getting your internet on the road. Hands down, the most asked question of us and of any of our full-time RVers, how do you deal with internet? And, you know, this is a challenging year for internet. Every... Every year, there seems to be some of these, uh, what we call unicorn plans, like plans that sort of pop up and they're like completely unlimited, unthrottled data for a fair price from a major carrier. But then they're only available until that carrier realizes, oh, that was a terrible idea. All these RVers are getting it and they're using 500 gigabytes a, a month and we can't support that. I had no idea there were so <laughs> many people on the road. Like, they just, it's like they've not ever, they didn't vet this. You think they'd they learn just... it like the first and second and third time they do this, but they, they all, there's always something like this that they do and <sighs> then they, then it gets taken away, unfortunately. So this year is is a strange year because of some of the stuff that happened last year AT&T particularly towards the end of the year you might remember we talked a bit about this on the show they started pulling unlimited plans that they were administering through third-party resellers left and right they just started yanking them uh, so a lot of those places that people used to go to get unlimited internet albeit expensive um, are gone so there are some options out there, and uh, and we're going to talk about them. But first, let's just sort of give you the basics of internet on the road. So the first most important thing that you need to know is that 99% of the time, people that are getting internet on the road are using cellular internet, cellular internet data, just like you get on your phone. They may be getting it through their phone, or they may be getting it through what's called a hotspot, a little device that basically does the same thing as your phone but it, it creates a Wi-Fi network in your RV, in your in your truck, in your, in your truck, wherever you are. <laughs> it's you can a, take special, a little with you. special little device. <laughs> right. Uh, and those, those can be a little device or they can be a big device that goes on your roof or they can be tethered to a big device on your roof. I don't want to get too much into those prickly details about how to make your signal a little bit better or anything like that. But for the most part, people are using 4G LTE Wi-Fi through cellular internet connections. You may have heard about 5G. 5G has been launched through several carriers across the country recently. I'm laughing because all I can think about are all those stadiums with 5G. <laughs> oh, like that was the thing. They, Remember it was like, the stadium has 5G. Well, they put... And <laughs> there's they, no one in the stadiums right now. They That was Verizon's big thing is they put 5G in all the stadiums <laughs> in the NFL across <laughs> the country because A, there's a lot of people in one space at one time, but then they thought they were going to start to show like they could put like the cameras on 5G and stuff and operate through cellular networks. And I shouldn't Guess laugh. what? They can't use I it know. at all. <laughs> I, now they're going to have to use canned crowd sounds this year. I shouldn't laugh about it. I mean, it, it stinks, but... I can't help but think like when I think about 5G, all that money is just sitting there in the stadium and nobody's using it. So the thing about 5G is it's supposed to really revolutionize cellular connections. And the whole thing about it is the latency, which is not quite the speed of it, but like how how fast it reacts with the 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 node on the other end. So say you're a surgeon that is in Los Angeles, you could be performing a real-time surgery you know, through a robot in New York with no lag. That's the that's the idea. But that super speed is only going to be in cities very close to towers. 5G is not something that's really going to affect us as RVers probably for years because rural communities, even though even if they're offering 5G um, where we're traveling to for the most part, it's it's not the same 5G. It's just a little bit faster 4G. Anyway, my point here is that there are very few hotspot type connections that are 5G yet, and it's really not something you need to worry about right now. Yeah, right? it's not going to give you cancer or anything. Well, there's that. <laughs> there's that I concern that people sorry, have. Sorry, I couldn't. I, <laughs> I was trying to tell myself not to go there. Uh, 5G will not hurt you. So the, uh, other, <laughs> the other two types of technology that people use to connect to the internet on the road are satellite and um, 
satellite internet has been expensive and slow for a very long time, that's going to change. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the other one is campground Wi-Fi or other Wi-Fi networks around. Campground Wi-Fi, as anybody that's traveled a lot is rarely reliable though sometimes it is this campground and the last campground we were at actually fairly decent fairly decent this one was really good when we got here and it's just kind of been slowly ticking down a little bit and i think a lot of that has to do with that the campground itself yeah. has begun to stay pretty consistently packed i mean here we are at the end of june now we're coming up on fourth of july holiday too so that doesn't surprise me but it to me I never, ever, ever factor in campground Wi-Fi. I don't look for campground Wi-Fi when we're booking a place. No. If they say they have it, I think their definition of Wi-Fi is very different than my definition of Wi-Fi. So don't rely on that as a full-timer. Don't say, well, I'm only going to go to campgrounds that have free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Even with a booster or, you know, even grabbing it, like, you know, we grab with our road link or whatever. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, it, it, it may improve the signal a little bit better in your rig as opposed to outside, but you're, you're not going to get a, a, a lot better signal if the signal isn't great in, for, in the first place. And part of the problem is that it's just really expensive to make a Wi-Fi network big enough for everybody in the campground to stream Netflix on all at the same time. Yeah, I mean... Hamilton is dropping July 3rd on Disney Plus, <laughs> and I fully expect to be trying to stream that in like bits and pieces. Like I'm going to get like two minute chunks of it because no. <laughs> so many people are going to try to be doing that all at once. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them are trying to do it in the campground. Now, there are a lot of campgrounds that do have the technology to restrict video usage on their networks, which actually helps to speed up for all the important other things that you need to do. And some have business centers and stuff, and those are great places to go. Um, and, you know, there's also Wi-Fi at places around town, like Starbucks and McDonald's um, and... Local cafes. And libraries. We Lib love yep. going to libraries for Wi-Fi. We still use that type of setup a lot when we're when the internet connection at the campground is slow, whether it's through our, our cellular or not, uh, we'll often end up at a library. Or a Starbucks. Or a Starbucks. In fact... But let's be honest, more often than not, it's a Starbucks. Yeah, more often than not. In fact, last night before I went to bed, I was prepping my coffee for the next morning, and the trailer smelled a little bit like coffee, and Jack goes, oh, it smells like a Starbucks in here. I miss going to Starbucks for Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's been a minute since they've been in a Starbucks. So... You're going to want cellular internet if you're going to hit the road and you want serious internet data. You're going to want to get a cellular internet plan. Now, you can tether to your phone. That's one option. Uh, or you can get one of these hotspot plans. And if you go to, say, a Verizon store and you tell them you want an unlimited hotspot plan, they're going to be happy to sell you one. You're not going to be happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> because unlimited, be air quotes. <laughs> Because the unlimited isn't the only thing we need to be concerned about. Unthrottled is the other thing. Mm -hmm. Unlimited is the amount of data you can use. When they say you can use endless amounts of data, they're not telling you that after you use 15 gigabytes, which is not a whole lot, they're going to slow your data stream way down to almost unusable speeds, certainly unusable for video. And, Do we have unthrottled? Uh, we, we not on our phones like yeah. if we tethered to our phones it is unlimited but it is throttled after 15 gigabytes right right our our cellular data our, our other cellular data which i'll talk about in a bit our ours are unthrottled but they're not available right now oh sorry. <laughs> sorry so there <laughs> really isn't a whole lot of options out there that are unlimited and unthrottled and that's what i was talking about about those unicorn plans the ones that people really want because they cut those out very quickly but we do have a few different picks for you to think about and the first one is through the fmca fmca is we're big fans of the organization it is the world's largest nonprofit rv club uh, has thousands and thousands of members and it's about 75 bucks a year i think to be a member of fmca it's 85 actually but i and, think it's 75 your first year and then it goes up to 85 perhaps, or, or the other way around yeah and we have a 10 dollars off code i think that is still active and i'll drop that in the show notes just if anybody wants to use it we don't get anything off of it they're not sponsoring the show 
they just keep that $10 off code open because they appreciate RV Miles and they appreciate the community. So if you're a member of FMCA, you get all kinds of discounts on lots of different things. You get their monthly magazine, which is a great magazine, Family RVing. And you get uh, the probably the best reason to be a member of FMCA is there they have emergency evacuation insurance we've talked about that in the past where basically if you have a medical emergency somewhere you're out boondocking in the middle of nowhere it'll fly you you know it'll come bring a helicopter to you and pay for it uh, or if you're you know say we're here where we are in colorado and somebody got uh, badly injured it will fly us to our home state of illinois our whole family in order to deal with whatever that medical situation is after this, you know, stabilizing medical care. It's a fantastic program. They'll deal with your rig and everything. But if you are a member of FMCA, you qualify for their Tech Connect Plus plan. This is a internet plan through Sprint. Now, Sprint has the smallest network of the four major carriers. Um, so you're not going to have that really robust reliability of access to to internet that you'll get through verizon or at&t however it is unlimited and unthrottled for the most part for 50 bucks a month you can get this plan through fmca you do have to rent the router through them the router it's only a 39 dollar one-time fee so it's not that big of a deal um, but you're going to get for 50 bucks a month unlimited and unthrottled data the only thing that is throttled is video speeds are throttled to 480p resolution mm. so you're not going to be watching high def video but that is enough to watch video on your tv and have it look decent enough that you'll be okay with it yeah you know? the kids watched yeah. how to train your dragons today yeah. on 480 because that's the only way i could get it to right work. right it looks it's just fine it's really not as bad as it sounds um, especially, you know, when we have 4K TVs and all that, but it lo you'll hardly notice the difference on a laptop uh, and on a TV. It, it'll just look, it'll look like you're watching TV back in 2001. Um, <laughs> the other, so, so that's a great option through FMCA. Um, it, and it's going to work, that sprint plan is going to work anywhere near cities when you're near highways and stuff like that. You can look at their coverage maps. There are just some places where you're not going to have any data at all, very rural places often. Another option is a company called Visible. Uh, and Visible is actually a division of Verizon. It's sort of Verizon's budget carrier plan, um, like Cricket. It's, it's in that range. And... Um, what visible does is you have to buy the phone from them so this is a smartphone plan that you tether to your phone with um, which means your phone becomes a wi-fi network a hotspot, and you can connect your computer to it over wi-fi you can get unlimited data to tether to your phone on visible on on any of their plans for a fair price usually about 40 bucks a month it's actually less Per line if you have multiple lines there are two catches here it is throttled at five megabits per second which is um, which is fairly slow for internet speeds but it is fast enough to watch video still and we have often had our speeds at five megabits per second and have been able to uh, watch video over that now you'll only be able to watch on one tv at a time <laughs> which is fine because the other catch of visible's plan is that you can only connect one device to your phone at a time. So a family of five like us, it wouldn't really work unless we had several lines because we're often connecting several devices to our internet. Yes, which but, is why we don't have this plan. But for solo travelers or, or couples, this might be a very good option to think about two visible phones and, and you are on Verizon's network, the biggest network out there with unlimited data. It's, it's actually a pretty fair deal. Now, one of the issues though with that is that you are not um, the data that you're getting through visible if i can explain this correctly the data that you're getting through visible is not as high a priority on the network as somebody who has a regular verizon plan right so if i was sitting here on my verizon phone you were sitting there on your visible phone I would get priority first. Right. You would have to wait or you would be slower or it yeah. just wouldn't be the same quality. And if we're in a place like Quartzsite, Arizona, where 
a hundred thousand RVs gather in the middle of the winter and Ooh. there's very few cell towers and lots of people are on Verizon, you're going to be lower on the totem pole. And you'll be very frustrated. Yeah. But those honestly are our only real unlimited picks right now. Uh, like I said, it's a difficult year for internet right now. Uh, but do you absolutely need unlimited internet? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. You know, are you somebody that really works a lot? Are you somebody that uses a lot of video? Are you a big family? All that sort of stuff, because you can get plans that have a decent amount of data at an affordable price, but it's not going to be unlimited and unthrottled. It might be unlimited, uh, but it's not going to be unthrottled. And sometimes that throttling isn't so bad, especially if there's not a lot of people on the tower, they'll kind of just let you go for it often. Uh, but we do have a couple picks for, uh, for regular plans, limited picks. So the first is if you operate a business of any kind and have a tax ID number, you can get business plans through both AT&T and Verizon, the two biggest carriers. And our best pick here is through AT&T. And we've actually found AT&T often works a little bit better than Verizon, even though Verizon network is a little bit bigger. I think our AT&T works a little bit better sometimes. I would say here, AT&T is working better for us than Verizon is for sure. Yeah. But AT&T has a plan for $85 a month, their business unlimited elite plan that gets you 100 gigabytes of mobile hotspot data, uh, which is a good amount for that price. And that's going to cover most of a, a lot of people's needs, unless you have like a big family like us that's watching everything under the sun. Like literally five of us will be watching five different things sometimes. Or you're uploading <laughs> three podcasts exactly. a week and a lot of YouTube content and you're just constantly using the internet to work. Our other pick here is standard AT&T or Verizon phones to use as hotspots or their hotspot plans. And why we choose these standard plans instead of some, uh, some secretive other plan through a third party is again, that network priority. So you can be the first in line if you have a crucial thing that needs to get through or you're doing a Zoom meeting with your business partners that is absolutely essential. This is a good way to go about it. Well, we have also found with third party, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those in a second, but we've just heard a lot of stories where those just go away. You know, and well, you're, let's you're, talk about it now. I okay. mean, so third party plans, are, some of them have been great for a lot of people for a long time. And there are companies with names like Unlimited Ville. There, there are all these companies out there that that have purchased maybe sets of business plans or they had other ways to access plans over the years and they're renting them back out to people. They can be expensive to get, but they can offer you serious unlimited internet. But again, some of the carriers are pulling back from these and, and leaving people in a lurch a bit because you have to often pay a big upfront fee to be part of one of these plans. Not always, but sometimes you do. And then often the monthly fee is expensive. And we have just had terrible reports of customer service yeah. from most of these companies because they are very small companies, you know, one or two people dealing with this stuff. Um, I'm sure there are some good ones out there, but the fact that it's changing so quickly, some of them just aren't bringing on new customers because they can't. So um, that's a challenge right now. Now that may change next week, who knows? But our current recommendation is not to get a third party plan. Especially if you are working full time on the road and you need the reliability Sometimes you just have to pay a little bit more for the security that you need in order to do the job that helps keep you out on the road. Yeah. Now, obviously, these plans that we've talked about all have their limitations, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why our biggest recommendation for anybody looking to do this is to have backups. Now, that could mean getting that FMCA Sprint plan and having AT&T phones as your backup. So whenever that Sprint plan is working, you use it. And when it's not, you use your AT&T phones. Yeah, I mean, we don't play around. We have Verizon and we have a plan that we've had for a really long time that we've talked about kind of letting go because it's rather expensive. But as we mentioned earlier on, it's unlimited and unthrottled and you can't get that anymore from them. So we hold on to it because on top of that, I mean, I probably do 35 to 40% of my work every day 
just on my phone, just using the data on my phone because it's just easier. There's so much you can do now with your Apple, with your iPhone. Yeah, and using your phone is a way to save a lot of data because most of those most of those plans where you're you're getting the data on your phone, they give you 15 gigs or whatever it is of tethering data before they throttle you or cut you off. But usually it is unlimited on device, like on your phone. So there are tips and tricks that we have in order to, to sort of use that on phone data as much as possible. So for instance, when I l upload this podcast to both YouTube and to our podcasting host, what I will do is I will airdrop it to my phone and upload it from my phone. And that saves a huge chunk of data. Now, we are still licking our wounds a little bit from the road link because that really was supposed to be sort of the answer to everything, right? And so many of you are probably feeling that way too. And AT&T just completely pulled the rug out from underneath all of us. So I think this is, again, have that backup because when Roadlink dropped last year and we had it and we all rushed to get it, we almost dropped this plan. And we thought, well, let's hold back just a little bit. Let's, you know, we want to wait and see what happens. And we also had AT&T too, and we almost dropped that. And we said, nope, we're going to wait. It's such a good deal on this AT&T hotspot. We're going to hold on to it. And I'm so glad that we did because this is why you sometimes, depending on your internet needs on the road, especially as a digital nomad, you need to have your plan, your backup, and sometimes your backup to your backup. Yeah. And that's what we were doing with the road link. We really wanted it to work out. We know that our friends over at Togo did as well. AT&T just wasn't having it. And so go into something. If you're like, this is the unicorn. We finally, we caught it. Like we're about, I think we're about to talk about what everyone thinks is going to be the unicorn here very, very soon. But have a backup to that unicorn. Have your pot of gold somewhere. Yeah. So that, that what Abby was referring to is Satellite internet through Starlink. Star Lord, now, right? Starlink. Starlink Star Wars? is the company ran by Elon Musk. Star it Trek. Is, it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just pretend you're not talking. <laughs> Starlink is. A, it's a new type of technology. There's sort of been a race to satellite internet to real good satellite internet. Satellite Boots on the moon. Internet has been around for a while, <laughs> uh, but it hasn't been great. Now what they're doing is putting all these little satellites in the air that are like, I don't know, the size of the table in front of us. They're very small, low Earth orbit satellites. So they orbit much, much lower than most of the satellites that are up there now. And they sort of, if they if they were to re-enter the atmosphere, they just burn up. Um, and the idea here is to get like 40,000 satellites surrounding the Earth that will be satellite internet connection for virtually anybody anywhere at an affordable price. Starlink says they're probably going to be about $80 a month for unlimited data, which sounds fantastic. But the challenge here is they've got to launch all that, those satellites. Um, they're working on North America first. Canada will be online later this year. Uh, the U.S. will be online probably next summer or so, but not entirely online it won't have like the 40,000 satellites it'll only have you know a few hundred and the number of people trying to access that could be a problem in more populated areas where you're all trying to share the same satellite so that's that's one challenge the other challenge is that the antenna that you will mount on your rv or put on the ground or whatever it is is expected to be very expensive <laughs> until there's a sort of, you know, mass appeal and lots of people buy them that drives the manufacturing cost down. Or until they've right. made the second version or the third yeah. version or the fourth version of this antenna. And everyone wants it to be the unicorn. It's going to take a little bit of time to shake this Yeah, down. it's going to take two or three years before yes. it is really something that we're seeing commonly on RVs. And even then you're probably gonna wanna have cellular backups, but it is going to be a great thing that is going to start shaking up the world of cellular data as well, because the cell companies are going to have to compete, uh, especially in rural areas. And well, it's just gonna shake the world up at large. Right. It's going to bring internet to places where they're still living with like dial up, like they're, you know, and they're still hearing the, yeah. You know, and they shouldn't be. This is 2020. So this is just going to be, as you say, a game changer. <laughs> 
all across the globe, but it's going to be two to three years before that's really something that we're talking about on a regular basis here on the show. But it could affect pricing and offerings through the cellular companies sooner and the advent of 5G and the merger between T-Mobile and Sprint are also, those are different things that also might sort of shake things up a little bit. And we might see more of these unicorn plans popping up. So our biggest tip right now is to look at these different plans that we're talking about, but don't really get too locked into any sort of one thing. Don't spend a lot of money upfront on one thing because stuff could change and you want to be prepared for when one of those unicorn things pops up to grab it because one of our unicorn things has been working for us for three years even though they let's, discontinued it two years ago so let's not talk let's about not it. tell anybody that yeah Shh. <laughs> so i was really impressed i have to say to you that you have put together a really comprehensive article one that we can't even fully cover yeah. here on the show but it'll be in the show notes. It's over at rvmiles.com. We've been sharing it across social media. But Jason really goes into talking about how to find campsites with good cell data, free Wi-Fi, a lot of tips and tricks and resources. So just know that we've kind of cracked this egg a little bit, but there really are ways to make this work for you, especially if you're looking to go full-time, which is the whole reason why we're bringing this up as part of our full-time RVing series. So go over to rvmiles.com, give it a read. But more importantly, let us know what you're using out on the road. Leave a comment on the website, leave a comment on YouTube, find us in the RV Miles Facebook page. But if you're seeing something in here that maybe we forgot and didn't get to cover, we'd love to know about it. And I do want to mention, I do want to give a shout out here to the Mobile Internet Resource yes. Center, rvmobileinternet.com. Chris and Cherie uh, over there have done a fantastic job of finding every little detail testing every little device they never have been sponsored by anybody and they test every plan out there and give you all the information it's a little dense there's a lot but there's uh if you want to learn more than you ever thought you won't could learn about mobile internet that's where you want to go and you can also check out episode 121 of the rv miles podcast when we had chris and sheree on the show to talk a little bit about the future of mobile internet and their life on the road, which has been very, very interesting. Very fascinating. Well. Yes. And we'll put that in the show notes too, just to make it easier to find. Okay. It's time to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have our fresh tank, black tank segment and the new brain teaser. Be right, Be back. right back. The RV Miles podcast is supported by Hughes Autoformers, makers of the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV, and the Power Watchdog beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With every other brand, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small affordable part you can replace yourself. It's the last surge protector you need to buy. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoFormers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoFormers.com or click the Hughes logo in the show notes for this episode. And by the Highway Weather app. When it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that's included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. And we'll link to both Hughes Autoformers and the Power Watchdog and the Highway Weather app in the show notes at rvmiles.com slash 150. All right, it's time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? 
So my black tank goes to not necessarily the individual at Walmart that I encountered, but just the spirit of the individual that I encountered at Walmart. So last week I needed to go grocery shopping and I went grocery shopping. And for anyone who's grocery shopped at Walmart or maybe any of the other grocery stores across the country, you know, a lot of them now are putting in one-way lanes. You go one way, that's the only, it's just sort of to help with social distancing, right? So I was at Walmart and I happened to be going down the wrong lane. I knew I was going down the wrong lane. I I realized it, but you're sort of like you're in it to win it. And after 20 years of just shopping a particular way where we all just go wherever we want to go, it's very, very hard to navigate this new normal in the grocery store to keep your distance and go the right way and try to get in and out as quickly as possible and try to touch as little as possible. Grocery shopping has become just this whole other beast. It was already kind of stressful to begin with. Now it's just something else. Anyway, I'm moving down the line and a lady not wearing a mask (laughs) says to me, you know you're going the wrong way, right? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, I do. And she just rolled her eyes at me and just pushed on. And What was so frustrating was that there was also an older woman behind me who happened to be going the wrong way too. And she did the same thing to her. And she was just really, really vile. And we both felt so bad and just sort of just, you know, it was such a stressful situation. And the older lady that was behind me, she asked me, she's like, I'm just, I'm so lost in the store trying to find something. So then I kind of helped her where she needed to go. But it just sort of like rattled me a little bit. And it's not the woman I'm black tanking. It's just the spirit. Like we're all trying really, really, really hard. And I knew I was going down the wrong aisle, but I wasn't doing it to be malicious. And I just kind of think like right now we're doing the best we can and we need to give each other a little bit of grace and recognize that tensions can be really high. And as much as I wanted to fire back at that woman, I just took a breath and thought to myself, well, maybe she's just also having a bad day or maybe somebody just did this to her. And so she's trying to throw it back at somebody else. Who knows? But, you know, if you go to the grocery store and you see someone going down the wrong lane, just maybe assume that they didn't mean to do it, but they're just trying to figure all this out and just give them a little bit of grace and let them pass on by you and then go get your Cheerios. That's my black tank. All right. What's in your fresh tank? My fresh tank is a show that you and I are loving right now that I'm going to recommend to anyone who wants something easy and fun to watch. Uh, If you are a fan of Top Gear back when it was good, so that's when Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May were the hosts, and then they moved on to do the grand tour on Amazon. Well, James May has this show on Amazon right now called James May, Our Man in Japan, And it's six episodes of him going around Japan and just trying to understand Japan and the Japanese culture. It's clearly something he's been really, really fascinated with for almost like three decades. It's so funny and just really good and really entertaining. And Jason and I were watching an episode, they had episode four. And there is a section in episode four where he was trying to go around with uh, this touring interpreter robot thing. Jason was laughing so hard. Like the trailer was Our shaking. kids actually yelled from the bedroom. It was late at night and the kids yelled from the bedroom. Why is the trailer shaking? I know. Which <laughs> We're just watching TV, kids. Like, <laughs> like, there's, it's, it was so... Funny. So I just absolutely And, and not child it. appropriate at all, by the oh, way. Don't no. watch this with your do kids. N- do not watch this with your children. <laughs> you can't even get past earmuffs. Okay, don't <laughs> don't watch it with the kids. Uh, but do watch it. Like if you just want something that you can breeze through really, really quick, six episodes, and it's just the Japanese culture is so fascinating, and it really made me want to go back to Japan and go back to Tokyo again. It's Incredible. And James May is just, he's just a lot of fun to watch. All right. What is your black tank, sir? Well, you know, we are, we have been in the shadow of a forest fire for the last uh, week and a half, yes, maybe we now. Have. Um, and <laughs> there, it, we're often, we're generally under what's called a red flag warning, which is a an advisory that you're not allowed to have campfires outdoors. You're not allowed to use charcoal grills outdoors. You're not even supposed to be smoking outdoors. 
uh, because there are fires. There are fires happening all over right now. Uh, Arizona has is having terrible fires. Maine is having terrible fires, and we're having fires here in Colorado. Mesa and Verde is closing down hikes because the their fire warning is so high right now. They don't want people down in the canyon. It's yeah. just really, really dry and windy here. So during the red flag warning, you are allowed to use propane appliances because you can turn them off. But we have witnessed so many people making regular campfires in this campground in like with smoke in the distance from a forest fire like you can see it and we know that the campground is telling you that we are under a red flag warning and you are still choosing to build that campfire Mm -mm. oh i mean that's the. it was like one of them last night was like lord of the flies can that thing was so tall i expected to see them just like running around it I mean, can you imagine though if it if no, it I don't lit off imagine. this campground? That's frightening. I don't want to imagine yeah, so. it. I hope that uh, as we continue to move through the season, that uh, people will be a little bit more mindful. But if you're if you're like us, if you're Midwesterners, or if you're from the East, uh, where fire bans aren't that common, um, this is something you really got to watch for when you travel in the West because it is so dry in a lot of climates that there are often. Um, places where you can't have campfires at all and there are often places where there are temporary bans on campfires that you have to watch that's why people have so many propane fire pits which i used to be very very much against but actually they're kind of nice well we've only had one campfire since we have gotten here because of the red flag warning so you know if we were able to have a propane fire pit uh that would be a different story but we don't and we don't build fires because of that all right what is your fresh tank? Uh, my fresh tank is uh, something new in the RV industry, which I find very cool. Uh, or maybe not cool, or just, <laughs> you that it's, reward that? just that it's about time. <laughs> like, okay, so, you know, if you're shopping for cars and trucks, the model years change over at the same time every year. At the end of this summer, all the new 2021 cars and trucks will be available. For you to purchase this fall they'll start releasing them uh the rv industry has had nothing like that so if you're going to look for rvs on the lot in their 2020s or 2019s or 2021 it's very hard to compare them and tell when they're made and and compare one with uh, another brand because because they have there's no rhyme or reason to the model years they can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and they can vary from model to model or even within the same model one model might be, have been uh released in august of last year and then this year that same rv the new one will be out in november you just don't know so the rv industry has gotten together and they have made a a recommendation for when RV model years will be, and they will be during the summer. So from June 1st to August 31st is when the model year changeover for RVs is going to happen. And this is gonna be phased in over the next couple of years. But this is great because it is going to help consumers compare models. It's going to help with financing. There's always a challenge with financing and some confusion over, you know, you you buy an RV and it's built on a, uh, a 2019 Mercedes-Benz chassis, but it is a 2020 unit from the RV manufacturer. There's lots of confusion with insurance companies, and this is going to help consumers navigate that a little bit better. It's going to help dealers manage their inventory a little bit better, and it's going to help equipment suppliers know that every year during this time is when we're going to offer all of our new stuff that's going to go in the new RVs, and they'll be able to supply dealers with replacement parts a lot better so once this is all implemented and again it's going to take a couple of years it's going to be great for consumers isn't it amazing though that something as simple as a date change will need a couple of years it is, yeah. to implement we're going to put forty thousand satellites <laughs> up into orbit in the next maybe two years or so but a date change in the RV industry is going to need a couple of years to get that done. Yeah, but you know, when they're manufacturing know, one model right now, they're already planning the next. There, and... Yes, there's it's getting everyone lined up and there's a mm -hmm. lot of little pieces that have to fit together. It's just, it is always amazing to me that we start talking about something 
but we're not going to see the fruition of it for years. Now, it is voluntary, so <laughs> it's, it is very possible that some manufacturers might not follow it, but it is uh, voluntary. Something else the RV industry is doing, though, and this is required of manufacturers that are members of the RV Industry Association, is they have finally created another standard that should have been obvious and should have been done a long time ago, a length standard. So, you know, when you see the length listed on an RV, and often it's in the model number, like our RV is a QB300, and the 300 is supposed to mean 30 feet. Well, that 30 feet is our in interior. Usually those lengths are your interior in the model number. And then when you see length measurements on the outside, sometimes some manufacturers do, uh, for instance, on a trailer, they'll do the box, but not the tongue. Uh, or they won't include the bumper on the back. Uh, or on a fifth wheel, they'll measure from the pin to the back instead of the front cap to the back. Makes no sense. So now <laughs> RVs being sold uh, are going to be required to have a label on them that says the exact length, and that length has been standardized. So on a motorhome, it is from the very front, uh, front thing on the motorhome, usually the bumper, uh, and all the way to the back. It does not include accessories like ladders and spare tires and stuff like that. So, but it's usually going to be bumper to bumper But what on a motor wouldn't home. it if those things come standard? Well, they're not always standard. That's exactly why is they're not always standard. So one might have a ladder and one might not of the same model. Okay. You know, that, that's right. kind of why that is. And, a, you know, the spare tire could be different width depending on I the I mean, because our spare tire... Jets out <laughs> Quite further. A bit. Yes. Ours lays so, this way. Yes. As opposed to this way. Yeah. Uh, you're doing that visually, but we should say ours lays flat. Yeah. As opposed to vertical. We have a rack on the back that lays down and it lays yes. up. So if we fold that rack up, it goes vertical, but it goes but down. But we use that further. rack. So the yeah. spare tire is always jetting out further than now, on our, the rack. Now, on our rig, that whole rack would not count. As a part of uh, which the makes no sense well, because that's easily three, <laughs> if not four, extra feet. But it's feet. because it's an option. So, uh, but regardless, it's going to be uh, on a trailer. It's going to be the very tip of of the uh, the tongue all the way to the to the rear bumper. On a fifth wheel, it is going to be either to the front of the pin box or to the far far front of of the trailer, whichever is closer. You know, whichever is bigger okay. so it is going to be the full width of all these rvs so that's fantastic they're going to be labeled that's going to be an easier thing for consumers and it only took us to 2020 to get that <laughs> amazing amazing all right i think that was a great episode i think we should wrap it up with a brain teaser how yes, about i agree is this one about cats <laughs> If it's about the musical, I'm here this for is, that. This but... is not about cats. This okay. is about Beethoven's wig. Oh, <laughs> which is almost like a cat. So Someone has stolen Beethoven's wig and has put it in one of four locked boxes. Gosh, Jason. <laughs> I can't with this. The, I'm going to sit back. <laughs> the boxes are numbered one, two, three, four in that order. There are four different keys that each has their own color. Use the clues following to figure out which key goes in which box and to find the box where Beethoven's wig is being kept. The green key goes into the third or fourth box. The wig is to the left of the fourth box. The wig is to the right of the first box. The yellow key is to the left of the wig. The blue key is to the right of the yellow key and to the left of the green key. The red key goes to the first box. If you know the answer, God bless you. <laughs> Jason, do you think that when Beethoven was writing Moonlight Sonata... Well, he thought that we would be doing a brain teaser on the RV Miles podcast yes. about his wig being locked in a box? No, I don't think so. As he's putting together one of the most incredible pieces of music ever written, he's thinking to himself, gosh, I really hope that somebody out there on the internet... Puts a riddle together about my wig. 
<laughs> and there you have it. You're welcome, Beethoven. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure, but if you, you know, you probably have to rewind a little bit to hear that all again. But yes, we'll have the answer <laughs> on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yeah, and if you know the answer, feel free to drop us an email over at editor at rvmiles.com if you would like us to confirm before next week what the answer is. And really quick before we head out, I want to say thank you to everyone across social media and on the RV Miles Facebook group who answered the call and headed over to Apple Podcasts and left a five-star review. We are a teeny tiny little organization over here and your support, that support in particular, just skyrocketed us in the way that we really needed it to do. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And if you haven't done it yet and you want to, we would be so thankful if you would just head over to Apple Podcasts. RV Miles and the RV Miles Network, America's National Parks Podcast, See America's Podcast, which just started its fourth season. And we are talking Major League Baseball for the season opener can also be found on your preferred podcast app. We're all across social media, so come connect with us. We love talking to you. And until next week, thank you so much for spending your time with Jason and I. And keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody.